How's it going today? Hey, how's it going, man? Not too bad. You know, it's it's still a little early, but it's okay. Yeah. We're all right. We, uh, once once uh, McGarry gets into his second Diet Coke, it's hard to, it's hard to stop him. <laughs> I, I, I think he might be supplying those Diet Cokes. <laughs> uh, Kev, okay. he, before we get into ahead. before we get into some hoops, uh, I want to get your thoughts on the uh, proposal for, by the NJSIA for the uh, expanded football playoffs. What do you think about that? Um, you know, in all honesty, I haven't really dug too deep into it. I just kind of kind of just got the ideas and, and what's on the surface. Um, you know, I, on the plus side and is, is definitely the fact that it moves a lot closer to a true state champion. And I, and I think that's ultimately what uh, people people want to see. Um, and like Mike said, you know, for, for whatever reason, it has not been – it is just, just just has not happened. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's, got, it's, it's got some pluses. It's got some minuses. You know, I think there's going to be some people that – um, may not exactly be in favor of starting the season early as as it is, even if it is just a week because of of the possibility of Labor Day weekend falling in there here and there, and and uh, you know having to start a little sooner in the summertime and stuff. But uh, you know, for the most part, I think the big thing is that how how can it ultimately turn into developing a state champion, and uh, that would be something that. No, I'm, I, I would clearly love to see, and I've said it for years. Um, it's just the one thing on the flip side is the the, the 16 teams, to me, um, qualifying for the playoffs seems to be a bit too many. Um, I think the product becomes watered down. Um, I've used the term product and watered down before. Uh, some people don't like it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think that so when you have 16 teams, you're getting in there. That there's going to be teams in there that probably should not be playoff teams. Um, I think you need to. T- uh, I think you need to be find a way to tweak that somehow, so that you don't have like like Mike and, and you have mentioned and others have said. You know, you don't want that that one 16 game. You know, I think even if there are six teams that don't qualify in each group, those bottom teams are still. They're probably not in the grand scheme of playoff quality. So right. uh, I'd like, I'd like kind of like to see that, that tweak a little bit because I'm, I'm not a big proponent of, of, of having teams qualify for the playoffs for, so they can play an extra game so that they can experience playoff football because, you know, the, the, you know, if you're, if you're two and five or two and six at the cutoff date and you're in the playoffs, uh, to me, there's something wrong there. You, you haven't done enough to warrant, earning a spot so i think that that's something that they really should they'll need to take a look at um but you know it's uh it's definitely a, a thought in the right direction and uh we'll just have to see how uh you know how the, the people want to uh you know vote on this kevin are you are you surprised that it's taken so long to even think about getting down to a true state champion in, in new jersey i mean pretty much every other state i believe has you know, at least group champions, you know, four or five state champions, you know, we got like 16 or 20 in New Jersey. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, uh, we've talked, I, I've, I've talked about this for years and then people have talked about it for years and it's, it's a wonder why you can look at other states and, and see what they do and why you cannot find a way to, if you can't model it like another state, just, flat out steal their idea for this at this stage of the game <laughs> right. how, how does another state do it let's do it that way and uh it just amazes me because it's a pet peeve of mine but you know for me if it's a jacket or if it's a t-shirt if it's a trophy in the case if it says state champion on it for football and you're not playing in the non publics you are not a state champion you are a south jersey champion period and, uh, you know, that's something that kind of eats me up a little bit because kids walk around, we, we, won the, we won the South Jersey Group 4 state championship. No, you didn't. You won a sectional championship. Right. And, and it's just a, it just boggles my mind how there cannot be a state champion in football. It is the biggest sport in the state. It is the biggest moneymaker in the state for that matter. And yet we have to – we have to we, it hasn't come to fruition. So – you know, uh, yes. You know, to, to answer your question, yeah, it kind of it, it, it just amazes me how there cannot be a state champion in football. Yeah, I mean, when I worked at a newspaper in North Carolina, and this was back in the mid '90s, they would have, 
I believe it was five groups. You'd whittle it down to an East champion and a West champion. The East would play the West, and, you, and you'd have five state champions. Oh, um, you know, we could sit here and, and, and figure out different ways to break down the state and then break down sections and, and figure this all out and all. And to us, it would seem like uh, it seems like a pretty easy, easy thing to do. But for some reason, you know, you get you get these certain factions of people who want it their way. Others want it this way. And, and no one ever can seem to agree on anything. So, you know, it, it's a shame that uh, there isn't a state championship because it truly deserves one. And, uh, you know, maybe this proposal is is another step and maybe it's a bigger step towards, you know, making that happen. Talking with Kevin Minnick of the Courier Post. Uh, Kevin, let's talk some hoops. Uh, what's on your radar this week? We're kind of in that mid-season feeling out portion of the season of, of hey, are we a contender? Are we a pretender? You're, you're starting to see some teams uh, rise up a little bit. We saw St. Augustine score a big win last weekend over Atlantic City, so they've kind of cemented themselves for the moment as the top team in South Jersey. Uh, who else is in contention to sort of knock them off if they get a chance here in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, we're, uh, you know, we're getting very close to the midway point. Uh, some teams have already, you know, played 12, 13 games and others are, are getting close. But, you know, now's when, uh, you know, I think that we've had enough time now to kind of, kind of figure things out. And the thing that sticks out in my mind the most is that, um, and we've talked about it before is that, you know, you have these top, there are these top tier teams. And, and clearly at this point, St. Augustine is the, is the, is the best team. You know, I don't think anybody would argue that. And then you take a step down, and there's another couple of teams in the mix right there. You got, you know, AC, I think, is in that mix. Shawnee is clearly in that mix. And after seeing Bishop Eustace, I think we have to consider Bishop Eustace a team that could possibly be in that next tier, and along with along with a Camden and a, and, a Haddon, and maybe a Haddonfield. And then you step down again. And then you have an, uh, another tier of teams that, oh, they're, they're close, but just when you think you're going to, just when you think they belong in a certain spot, they lose. And they lose miserably or something happens. So I think, you know, right now there's clearly a number one. Um, I think there's a clearly a maybe a two through five, two through six. And after that, split it up between the teams that are above average and the teams that are below average. But, uh, you know, real interesting, a really interesting team. And I finally got a chance to see him the other night uh, was Shawnee. And I think Shawnee is a team that if you are a fan of, um, you know, not exactly running gun basketball, but not, but on the flip side, not slow it down to a, to a turtle's pace. <laughs> Shawnee's a very entertaining team to watch. They, they pass the ball extremely well. They move without the ball. You know, if they're up 20, they're going to dive on the floor for a loose ball. They don't take bad shots. They rarely make bad decisions. And, uh, you know, they, they beat a Camden Catholic team the other night when they were up 35-6 to six at halftime. And, uh, you know, it was it – was, it was, they, they put a pounding on it, on a Camden Catholic team that year in and year out, although they may not uh, show it record-wise, is always a team that plays pretty good defense and always a team that is very competitive. And Shawnee just had them and did whatever they wanted. So, you know, I think uh, – you know, Shawnee is one of the teams that, uh, after watching the St. Augustine, after watching Shawnee, I'd love to see that game. I would love to see those two teams play because I think that could be, um, you know, a really, really good game. Uh, you know, you watched the St. Augustine and AC last week, and that was an entertaining game. I think Shawnee, Shawnee would make it even even more entertaining. I was that impressed. Now, Kevin, we we both saw uh, St. Augustine in Atlantic City last Saturday, and what's your impression of St. Augustine? It, it seemed to me like they're they're starting to figure it out uh, in terms of who's going to play what kind of roles. You know, you saw Austin Kennedy step up his game a little bit on on the scoring end, but also play great defense. And you saw kind of an emerging star in Marlon Hargis, who really has some some outstanding capabilities offensively. And, and when they let him go, he can really turn it on. I think he scored twenty four in that game. Yeah, and we talked about it before. I think I mentioned it last week that, you know, at this point, St. Augustine, once, once these, uh, once those starters get more minutes together and, and the fifth, or I'm sorry, the sixth and seventh guy off the bench, you know, get the more minutes and they really start to gel, um, you're going to see a little bit of a difference. And I think that's starting to happen. Um, you know, like, like McGarry said, defensively, um, you know, they play, they're, they're very, very good. 
And in, in defensively, you know, Justin Mutz is, is the one because he alters shots. He may not block every shot, although he tries. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, alter, he alters enough shots to, you know, to give, you know, give them a chance. And the thing with them is, you know, they're going to score some points. Uh, they've got very good shooters. They've got kids that are athletic. They run their sets extremely well. But, uh, you know, I think at the beginning of the year we're thinking Justin Mutz – uh, he's going to score 20, 24 a game or, and really lead the offense. Where I think maybe at this point, maybe Justin Mutz is much better if you had to pick where you want him, offense or defense. You might want to just take him on defense because of what he brings to the table defensively, rebounding, altering shots, and getting St. Augustine going the other way. So, uh, you know, like I said, they're a team that, you know, is, is going to play a lot of games. Uh, against some, some teams that probably don't belong in the same gym with them. No disrespect to those teams because they're on their schedule. But there are teams that probably do not belong in the gym with St. Augustine, but they're going to be pretty good. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids are going to get, get a chance to play. But in those bigger games, those games that are going to be a little bit tighter, I think those starting that starting five and two more off the bench, maybe three, uh, when they get when they get together and, they, and they, they're running and, they're, and everything's in a flow and the tempo's good, you know they're they're an extremely extremely tough team. Yeah, I think one of the biggest question marks that that sort of got answered in the Atlantic City game was is Justin Mutz going to be able to stay engaged when he's not scoring a lot of points offensively and can he up his game defensively when other guys around him are asked to do more offensively and we kind of saw that a little bit against Atlantic City where he had, you know, 11 rebounds and 7 blocks and was a force defensively. I mean, if he could do that, they can really go a long way this year. Yeah, you know, I think uh, when it comes to basketball, kids want to score points. They want to get their they want to get their shots and they want to score. But I think uh, you know Paul Rodeo is a is a good enough coach that he can he can get it through to these kids that you know maybe you know maybe you're not going to score 20 points tonight, but you know what? If you can get yourself 10 rebounds and a handful of assists and block some shots, you can have as big of an impact as you would if you if, if you'd have dropped 20. So. Uh, you know, if, if they they can they can come together and, and realize that you know points isn't everything, you know I think they're going to have something. Uh, they got something right there. And it's interesting to see a, a kid's reaction to that when they do only score six points and feel like they had a really good game because they did have the rebounds, the blocks, the assists, all that kind of thing, and kind of a kind of an aha moment, like oh okay, I can I can impact the game without scoring twenty five. Yeah, you know, there's not a lot of, like, you know, there, there's just not a lot of kids out there with that mentality. You know, some kids, there are, you know, a handful out there who realize that there are others around them that are capable of doing things. You know, what can I do to maybe set myself apart? What can I do to show the coach, well, coach, you know, I may not be the biggest scorer, but, you know, if you put me in the in the paint, you know, uh, they're not going to score. So, you know, if, if you have a kid that, like, that is like that and, you know, I, I don't know Justin well enough to say he's that kid, but from what I've seen, he looks like he enjoys blocking shots because he's, <laughs> he's blocking an awful lot of them. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's the that's the kind of thing that the that can, that can uh, um, you know help help the, the chemistry of a team. Uh, you know, you won't have the dissension of, well, he got more shots than I did tonight. Well, next game, he, that pass, he's not getting it. You know. So I think you know you get you get a group of kids that belong that believe in each other. They realize that if they do certain things together, they can win. You know that's that's a recipe for some serious success. Good stuff, Kevin. Up against the break, always a pleasure speaking to you. We'll catch up with you next week, buddy. Hey, I I am already looking forward to it. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. Bye bye. That was uh, Kevin Minnick of the Courier Post. Always.